art cannot exist in a vacuum. We need an audience for it to mean something, at least something. And I don't know. I, I don't think it's as like shallow as you know. Oh, support local music. You don't have to. Just support yeah. good music. Alrighty. What's up, man? What's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So, who are you? Uh, my name is Harish, mm -hmm. and I've been playing guitar since I was nine. Oh nice. Um, I definitely know who you are. Hi. Cause, I'm cause me. three years ago on New Year's night, uh, me and my friends bumped into you at like 4 a.m. <laughs> at a 7-Eleven, and like we took a photo with you. Yeah. And it's the profile of our WhatsApp group still till, till today. Understood. Yeah. I started singing um, when I was 14 in 2005. At the time, it was really just like a hobby. Like, I would mm. just do it outside of school, like. So when it eventually came time to decide like where to go to school, whether to even go to get a university education, a very strong option was like, I guess, music school? Right. Thankfully, my parents were super supportive of it. Like my dad's whole philosophy was like, you've already done this thing for so long, why go study something from scratch again when you can go right. study something that you already have like so much built up interest and you just need like a formal education to kind of like mm. laser focus it. Mm -mm. And that made a lot of sense. I think because my oldest brother sang, yeah. so naturally I just got involved in like performances and then like that kind of energy, once you get it from there, mm. like it's over. Like mm. you, don't, you don't really look back mm. after that. Not so much the question of what made you start guitar, but like what made you continue? I think in, in some ways like that energy did deplete, mm. like especially when I was doing IB mm. in like JC because like the reality of like life after school became a lot more yeah. like real, I yeah. guess. Like you said, when life got crazy, you're starting to do IB and all that stuff, you get distracted. Like it, it becomes very difficult to like maintain this what might seem from the outside as a ridiculous passion. Yeah. You know? Yeah. To be in that place where you're just driven by like blind passion. Like I feel like a lot yeah, like like everyone is chasing that. Like when it used to feel like that for me, and I honestly miss it. You miss it, right? I miss it. <laughs> yeah. And you're just trying to look for it, and like, I guess that constant chase is kind of like the journey of every musician, right? It yeah. keeps going until yeah. you stop chasing it. But yeah, like I always knew that music was kind of like going to stay in my life no matter what. Mm. I guess it was more like, how seriously did you want to take it? Did you want to just do it on the weekends as a hobby? Like do it after work, you know, whatever, just play with friends? Or do you want to like do a whole thing? I remember seeing you in sec two. Then you were playing guitar and you did this trumpet thing with your mouth. Mm. And I was like... <laughs> and I went back home and I was like... <laughs> yeah, no, but dude, it. it's, that's like the crazy thing about being in music, right? Because how I started was by watching someone else on stage. I just saw some random person on stage when I was in primary school performing for a talent show. They were just playing the guitar or someone was playing the piano and they were singing. And I was like, that's crazy. Like, how, yeah. how are they doing that? Seeing that in person and internalizing that, it left such a deep impression on me that I wanted to one day do something like that. And eventually I did. And then the crazy thing is eventually you find yourself in the reverse position where you're performing and then random people come up to you and they're like, oh, like that inspired me. I feel like there's so much more value in really solidifying the music community here in Singapore in whatever way, you know? Like build those blocks together and improve together, you know? Mm. As opposed to just chasing your own bag, I guess. Okay, like, I don't think that a local sound is not important. I think a local identity, like a music identity, yes, that's something that um, we should chase. Mm. I think it's something some people should chase, not everybody. For example, like, it's not every American artist sings country music. They just kind of sound like the feeling they want to sound like. Mm. And isn't that kind of the point? While I know that that's something that people always say, oh, all these Singaporean artists, they all sound, they're all trying to sound like Amo or whatever. Like, yes and no. You know, because you just, you sound like what you want to sound like. Essentially, when you create art, you're creating your own vision of who you want to be or what you want to express. Like, what is the Singaporean sound? I don't think there necessarily has to be a definition for that. I think, for me, one of the biggest struggles is seeing, like, what everybody else is doing. Right. You start to doubt, like, whether it's even practical or possible. 
personally, like what what is that mark of okay. success? Right, right. In ten years down the road, if I saw myself teaching, um, playing gigs, or performing like in small performances here and there, to me, honestly speaking, that's not making it. That's what I'm doing like now. Right. You see, making it varies from person to person, yeah. but for me, there needs to be a big leap between what you were before right. and and what you are in the future. It's very true that like the definition of success varies from person to person. For a lot of people, traditionally, it is like. A material return of somehow uh, of, of of some sort, mm. but then there's also the whole discussion of like, isn't it enough to just create it and that it exists and it belongs to the world now? Right, which but, is which is great. That's yeah. all well and good. Yeah. But like, why would I bother to do something if if that guarantee is not even there? And like, assuming that you're like one in a hundred or maybe in a hundred thousand, am I not allowed to take it? Because I took advice from the one yeah. percent or the zero point zero one percent. Yeah. Everything in life has its risks. It's a little bit of a gamble, and I think it's the same for yourself. You know, like, do you want to invest in yourself as an artist? Do you believe that you can create the things that you desperately want to create?、Mm. You know, for, for me, I always just feel like the act of creating is something that we just cannot place a value on because we just don't know what it is. You put、right. something out there, you have no idea who is going to listen to it, who is going to resonate with it. Yes. First of all, we have guitars now. Yeah. But like, how how do you find yourself like expressing like your feelings through music?、Mm. Guitar, for sure.、Mm. Yeah. Playing like dynamically is like super important.、Mm. People can tell like they don't they don't have the right words for it, but they know they know how to differentiate like a guy that just started versus a guy that's been playing for many years.、Mm. And the difference is always even if you're just playing rhythm guitar, it's like how you vary between soft and loud. Like、mm. they can feel it through. Anyway, and、right. what you're talking about, I guess, is the connection between the artist and the instrument. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mainstream media will always be very saturated with everything else, the stuff that comes from the West, the stuff that comes from regional, everything else. Like the the slice of the pie that local artists will get in terms of the mainstream media attention is not a lot. Like it's up to the people to search for themselves, to actively look for it themselves, because like they're as much a part of the story as we are. Art cannot exist in a vacuum. We need an audience for it to mean something, at least something. And I don't know. I, I don't think it's as like shallow as you know. Oh, support local music. You don't have to. Just support、yeah. good music. Like there's a time now where it's accessible and it's like legit. It's good. I'm also finding all these local artists、uh, on my streaming platforms and just like being surprised. It used to be that you knew every single recording artist there was in Singapore. And you could write a list of them and go like, oh, that one's good, that one's not bad, that one's only good live, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. But now I can't catch up. Like there's just a new act like every other week it seems. Yeah. And I love that. It's amazing. Like it's it's getting hard to choose even. It's getting hard to even like discern like where it, where it's coming from.、And、that's why I think like the lines are blurred. It's not only about you know blindly supporting local or whatever. Like you know yeah, seek it out and make your own discoveries, but don't feel obliged to do it. Like you know support the things that you love yeah, and that、yeah. vibe with you, things that you can connect with. And like that journey just becomes so much more satisfying. I think the ultimate goal is that you know, hopefully, eventually find ourselves a part of the global cultural conversation. Yeah. You know, the same way how like J-pop had its time and K-pop had its time. Like it's it's not because of you know. Passing interest or whatever—it's、yeah. like a lot of people put in a, like their whole lives into into making it eventually become worthy of global attention. I'm just happy to be a part of it because, like, there's no better time than now. I think there's really no better time than now, especially like 
when people are so hungry for it, mm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. There's the appetite that's there, and it'd be a waste to let it, you know, to let it go to waste. Yeah, yeah. definitely.